Welcome to my monitor guide. Now I'm going to run through some very basic things that you should be looking for in your first or next monitor of choice. I'm also going to talk about what kinds of resolutions you'd expect to game in with said specifications in your PC and what monitor types I would choose for said resolutions. Also, we'll discuss refresh rate just a bit, even though I have a dedicated video on that. A bit old, but the you know facts are still facts in this video right here. So let's get started. Which one should you choose for your next gaming PC? The Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900 White Edition is the definition of both function and form. Wireless charging, case inversion, and insane water cooling headroom make it one of a kind or one of 2000, because that's all Be Quiet's offering. Click the link in this video's description for more details. Let's start with the very basic stuff, especially for beginners, but even those who need a refresher. Maybe you have a really nice gaming PC, but a really crappy monitor, something like a 60 hertz 720p TN panel with terrible viewing angles, and it's just been dying to be upgraded for the past four or five years. That's what this video will seek to do, is give you that upgrade path. It'll make you feel comfortable about your next monitor purchase. As a disclaimer, most of the monitors you've seen reviewed on this channel have either been loaner samples, which means that I have to return them after review, or I've been allowed to keep them in exchange for review. I've actually purchased two monitors, one from ASUS, one from LG, but those are the only two. Everything else that you've seen reviewed has been sent to me. In fact, there are a few monitors laying around that I haven't even reviewed yet because there are so many here. That's what I want to stress. I'm not biased towards any company, towards any technology in the sense that I'm being paid or kind of like handed stuff for free to say good things about the technology because I receive all sorts of monitors from all different companies. So keep that in mind. I have a pretty open mind when it comes to trying out new technology, trying out a new company. I've never heard of before uh, and that's what I want to stress before I go into my preferences when I go looking for a monitor online. The first thing I ask any beginner when it comes to choosing a monitor is at what resolution they intend to game. Now for any basic PC that you can build that's pretty modern that's going to have a graphics card in it I recommend 1080p bare minimum. Even if you're not going to have a discrete graphics card in your system have a 1080p monitor just in case if you throw a graphics card in there you can utilize that resolution and bump all your in-game settings and be good to go. The second thing I ask beginners is at what refresh rate do they intend to game? This often involves some sort of learning curve. They've usually never heard of 120 hertz refresh rate and they're like, whoa, will, will I even be able to see that many frames? Is it gonna be that big of a difference? Should I pay 100, 200 bucks more for that higher refresh rate than the base 60 hertz? Because if they're coming from a console in particular, 60 hertz flat out gaming is still a pretty good upgrade from what they're usually used to, unless you're gaming on a relatively modern console. So I tell them 120 hertz is going to give you a really nice fluid buttery image. If you can get that upgrade in a monitor for around 100 or 200 bucks, go for it. It's worth it. And you still have that upgrade path, that breathing room if you want to swap in a more powerful graphics card later on. I found that it's very difficult to explain to someone who has not seen 120 hertz panel in action how good it actually is and how worth it it is for the extra price. And because YouTube only supports up to 60 FPS, I can't show you 120 versus 60 comparison side by side. What I can do though is show you a 30 FPS versus 60 FPS comparison and in my opinion it's a night and day difference. Now even though I'm more or less used to 120, 144 FPS at this point in time, jumping down to 60 is still noticeably better than jumping down all the way to 30. You're getting twice the frames per second and it gives you a very smooth and clean image. The law of diminishing returns though does interestingly enough play a role here. So from 30 to 60 you're only increasing your frame rate per second by 30 frames but from 60 to 120 let's say that's a 60 frame rate jump right per second but the difference there visually is a bit more difficult to notice in many cases. I would say that from 30 to 60, you're gonna notice a huge difference. One's really choppy in my opinion, one's pretty smooth. 60 to 120, big difference still. It's very, very smooth at 120. You will notice a difference just side by side. Uh, and then I would say from 120 to 240 hertz, you notice less of a difference. The sweet spot I would say to anyone with an entry level PC, maybe a Core i3, Core i5, Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 with an RX 460 or something like a GTX 1050 Ti, would be the 1080p resolution, at least in that monitor, and a 120 hertz refresh rate. What this will do is give you a solid upgrade path. If you have a cheaper 
graphics card that'll only output 60 frames, it's no big deal to have a 120Hz monitor. You won't see the extra frames, you might have some sort of interpolation going on, but the picture's not going to look anywhere as good as it would at 120 frames per second. So if you upgrade your monitor in the future, you'll have the ability to see those extra frames without the need to buy another monitor. Most of the time when you upgrade your graphics card, you have to upgrade your monitor too, unless you have a really nice monitor and a not so great gaming PC, in which case I would wonder why you had one and not the other, or why you had, yeah, you see what I'm saying there. So you usually want to have them kind of moving up the ladder at the same time, and that's why I recommend having the higher refresh rate at least, so that you have a bit of breathing room if you want to swap a 1060, say, for a 1070 later on down the line. Now for those who have a roughly $1,000 gaming PC on hand, this is where things really get interesting because you can do a lot of cool stuff here. You could choose to go for the highest resolution possible at the expense of a refresh rate, or you could go for the lowest resolution possible, or lowest resolution comfortable, at a really high refresh rate. So if you want 1080p 240 hertz, you just see like that there's value in that, then that's going to be your choice. If you really weigh refresh rate over resolution, you would want to go with a monitor like that. I've linked one down below, but I, I don't recommend most people go with a 240 hertz panel. It, it's just not going to be worth it. And it's usually going to be a TN based panel, which means your color uh, reproduction isn't going to be the best. The sweet spot for most people is going to be around 1440p at maybe 60 to 120 hertz. You can go as high as 4K in some cases, but you'll have to drop in game settings and keep that refresh rate to 60 hertz. Now what the 1440p 120 hertz or 144 hertz really doesn't matter. They're all kind of a above 100 hertz, so they're gonna look a lot better than 60 hertz, right? What those do for you is provide you the same upgrade path that the 1080p 120 hertz panel did for those in the roughly $500 gaming PC category. If you're packing, let's say, a Ryzen 5 or Core i5 CPU and maybe something like a GTX 1070, then you probably won't get the full 144 FPS experience right at the 1440p resolution in any modern game unless you really drop settings, at which point, why are you bothering to do that? Just keep in-game settings high, lower your refresh rate and actually enjoy the visual experience of the game. 60 hertz is still okay uh, for people who haven't been used to 120 or 144 hertz. Going backwards is it's pretty tough, I'll, I'll admit. So again, you have that upgrade path at your disposal for roughly a $1,000 gaming PC. Go for the 1440p resolution, that's my recommendation, and something with over a 100 hertz refresh rate. Now, if you want to get really fancy with it, let's say you're a content creator or you want to see extra stuff on the left and right side of your screen, assuming the game is optimized, of course, then maybe you want to go with something similar to what is behind me. This is the Viatech GN34C. It's an ultra-wide 1440p monitor, which means it has a 3440 by 1440 resolution with built-in free sync and a 100 hertz refresh rate. It utilizes VA technology which stands for vertical alignment. I talk about it specifically in this video right here and I can say without a doubt that this is one of the best value ultra wide monitors on the market for around 500 bucks or so. You get a really clean picture, excellent viewing angles, and a sweet refresh rate with built-in AMD free sync. It's even got a slight curve to it which is pretty fancy to give you that immersive in-game experience a bit more so than just a flat panel. Uh, it's not something I recommend for a TV just because you'll be cutting into the viewing angles of people sitting on the sides of the TV in your living room or elsewhere. But for a monitor where you expect to be the only person looking at your screen, the curve is nice to see. You can find the Viatech GN34C, by the way, linked in the video description. It's the one I've been using for quite a while. It's been in several videos and it's my daily driver for not only gaming, but also content creation. Kind of the best of both worlds in this ultra wide aspect. And also the 100 hertz refresh rate is still a substantial jump from 60. Again, not too expensive, around 500 bucks. Check it out in the link and let me know what you think if you have something similar. Now on to the cream of the crop. If you've got a really nice gaming PC, chances are you probably don't need to watch this video because you already know what you're doing. It's, you're willing to spend that much money on a PC. You probably know what you're doing. But assuming that you don't, or maybe you just want a, a refresher for an old time's sake, if you've got a 4K capable PC, then I suggest getting at least one 4K monitor. Now having a refresh rate higher than 60 Hertz is pretty demanding on any high resolution display. 4K in particular is a huge jump from 1080p. It's even a substantial jump from 1440p just in terms of raw pixel count on screen. Uh, but finding 120 Hertz 4K panel is recommended. I would say though, wait until prices drop a bit more. They're, they're pretty expensive right now and there aren't too many options. So once competition does start to spike up in the next few years, I would say that 4K 120 Hertz will become rather mainstream. I would say though, and I want to know what you think about this in the comments below because it might be controversial, especially for those who already have 4K monitors and have to justify them somehow, that even if you have a really expensive gaming PC at your disposal, you should still try to opt for the 1440p high refresh rate option. 
I say that for two reasons. The first is because even though 4K and 1440p are vastly different in terms of PPI, if you sit far enough back from your computer screen, it's gonna be pretty difficult to tell the difference between the two, especially if both are around 27 inches or so. On top of that, going from a high refresh rate panel, let's say 120 hertz, down to just 60 again with 4K, assuming that the 120 hertz option is not available, is a pretty substantial arrow to the knee. It makes it sound like we're elitist and spoiled with that high refresh rate, but anyone who has a high refresh rate panel knows the pains of dropping back down to 60 hertz. I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here, but I really do live by that principle. I've never owned a 4K monitor or used one as a daily driver because I don't see the value in it. While they might be cheaper than 1440p high refresh rate panels, I think that those panels offer more bang for the buck in terms of your overall gaming experience. 60 hertz is a big cripple for many people who are used to high refresh rates. Once you go high, it's really hard to go back down to the lower stuff. Uh, and that's why I would say still try to stick with 1440p, go for an IPS screen, you know, something that that's, looks really nice, has great color reproduction, that also has a really high refresh rate. So I've linked a really nice one from ASUS uh, in the video description. I've owned the TN panel version of it, but I recommend the IPS version if you want that sweet color reproduction and still that insanely high refresh rate at a decent screen size. If you like this video, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. It also lets me know that we're headed in the right direction in terms of content. I don't know why I'm pointing like this. This is what I should have been doing. If you have suggestions for future videos, be sure to leave those in the comment section. I read most comments within the first hour of this video is posting. So if you're relatively early to the video when it's uploaded on a certain date, then you might even get a personal response from me or a thank you or something along those lines. Uh, and stay tuned for more content like this. We're gonna do a few PC builds using Ryzen 3 CPU. So budget oriented stuff coming very soon. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us. I'm really glad I nailed it that time. I was like the 40th time trying that outro.